All right, it is 4.30 on March 18. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, standing uh, for a moment of silence and then follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we go to roll call, I just want to make sure that everybody who is listening by phone is, uh, is hearing me, hearing us, and I want to just make sure, I want to see who's all out there. So. Sam, are you there? Hello. I am. Sam, okay. Pete, are you available? Are you with us? Pete Hamill, are you with us? It's star six to unmute. Star six. Pete's gotta push the star six. Oh, okay. Pete, if you can hear it, press star six. I'm not hearing Pete. We're not hearing you. Uh, if you're having phone difficulties, call call Todd's cell phone, please. All right, uh, Tom, you're with us. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else out there listening that I should know about? Yes, this is Jared with the Bryan County. Well, Jared, all right. Thank you, Jared. Jerry Johnson. Tom from the radio station. Tom? Hi, Tom. How you doing? Doing well, thanks. All right. This is Micah, city attorney. Okay. Anyone else? It said we had seven people, counting Pete, he would be that seventh one, so. Hey, Kurt Stroud. Oh, Kurt Stroud here. Oh, oh, Kurt is listening in. Okay. So Pete must not be in then. All right. All right, let, let's have a roll call, please. Pete Hamill. Sean Brewster. Here. Brad Hunt. Here. Wayne Marahona. Here. Tom Eggers. Here. All right. Moving forward, we have the agenda here. I'll take a motion to approve that, please. So moved. Support. Roll call, please. Brewster. Aye. Marahona. Aye. Eggers. Aye. Kent. Aye. All right. Kevin, do you have a public comment <laughs> that you would like to make at this time? All right, because you're the only one that's sitting in the chairs right now. So I'm assuming there will be no public comments at this time. Moving on then to the consent agenda. Motion to approve that, please. So moved. moved. Support. Discussion. Roll call, please. Brewster. Aye. Eggers. Aye. Marahona. Aye. Kent. Aye. All right, we have no items under our old business, so we'll move on to the new business. First item. Hey, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, this is Sam. Uh, Pete Hamill just texted me, and he's trying to uh, video in. Is Kevin Miller up there? Kevin is, yes. Uh, Kevin, he's, he's trying to click on the link. Is, um, should he just be dialing in? Have him try that, yeah. Have him try that, he said. Okay. Do you want us to move forward or just wait a minute, Sam? Uh, yeah, let's give it just a minute. I'm giving, I'm giving him the number. Okay. Can anyone there hear me? Is that you, Pete? Yeah, oh. Pete. Yes, we hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, well, then I must be in. I just can't see, I, but you can hear me, so. Yes. Uh, we are at item five. We've just gone through the uh, consent agenda that was approved. 
We're moving on to new business under item 5A. Okay. Uh, and that is a resolution setting dates of a consultation and a public hearing on a proposed amendment number five to the amended and restated Sheldon Urban Renewal Plan in the city of Sheldon, state of Iowa. And Sam, that date you're proposing is what again? Say that again, Mayor. What date are you proposing for that, uh, that resolution for the consultation uh, and public hearing? The, uh, April 15 would be when the hearing would be, and then we have a, a consultation next week with the affected taxing entities. What date? And that information is in the packet. So that would be April, no, next week or said? Yeah, next week is the consultation with the affected tax entities. And what date is the actual, that? Uh, hear, the actual hearing is April 15. Okay, so the consultation is on what date? Oh, um, All right, so and then the April 15th would be our council meeting for the day, right? On that April 15th? Right. Okay. All right, so we have the dates of March 25 for the consultation, the public hearing on April the 15th. Can we have a motion to approve a resolution that sets those dates? So moved. So moved. I'll take yours as support, Tom. All right, any discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Hands. Aye. Eggers. Aye. Barahona. Aye. Brewster. Aye. Hamill. Did you say? Hamill. I'm sorry. Hamill says aye. All right. That motion carries. All right. Next item up. Approve the hiring of Lyle Froin as our street superintendent, effective tomorrow, March 19th. I'll accept a motion to do that. So moved. Support. Roll call, please. Hint. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Marahona. Aye. Eggers. Aye. Brewster. Aye. All right, that motion carries. All right, our final item here under new business is authorizing a Region 3 FAST Act grant application for the Western Avenue. And the FAST is the surface, what is the FA again? Remind me. FAST stands for? It has nothing to do with speed. I know that. And I looked at it, I was going to remember it. Now I've forgotten it. Well, nothing that city government does deals with speed. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing America's surface transportation. There we go. So, yeah, this is the same grant that we applied for with the Country Club Road, East 9th Street and 16th Street. Um, it's monies that are made available to the nine counties in, in northwest Iowa. We'll be, if, if, uh, we'll be going up against other cities and counties for these monies. We'll all be applying for the same monies. Um, it's a, uh, we'll be applying for a 60-40 grant. Western Avenue would be the proposed project. The uh, total estimated cost of that project is uh, 2.349 million. Uh, cities, cities, uh, that's total cost. Engineering, uh, not an acceptable amount. So the uh, grant application would be 2.5 million, with uh, getting 1.263 million from the grant. The city would have to cover the 842,000, which is 40 percent match, and uh, then on top of that, the engineering, which is estimated estimated to be at 274000 If we apply for the grant and get it, I would anticipate construction in the year 2024. It would likely cover two budget years for us, 23, 24, and 24, 25. Um, if you say yes today and we get it, you're essentially saying that the city of Sheldon will support their million plus in monies when the grant comes. So if 
be supporting a million plus in the year 2024 in return receiving. Let's go get it. All right, to get this up for discussion, let's have a motion for that, please. Make the motion to approve. Do we have a support? Support. All right, now we can have further discussion. Uh, the one question I had, you, you've been in discussion with Sioux County, since that is the county line, or partially. Yeah, yeah the, I, I did have a conversation. County. They would do the center of the street. I was just puzzled by the, the center because that's not the curb and gutter, or what does that mean, yeah, so, essentially? So, so what Doug's statement was, he didn't promise any amounts, but he said that Sioux County would likely participate in the, uh, to some level in the center 22 feet. And the reason he yeah. says the center 22 feet is because county roads are 22 feet wide. So, and, he, and, and they build rural roads. They don't build curb and gutter. They don't build storm sewer on the side. Uh, they don't have any interest in participating in those costs that they consider to be urban costs. I see. Yeah. Uh, but, but the fact that he's even willing to say, you know, I think we can help you out <clears throat> is, uh, is a lot further than we've gotten before. So yeah. I, th I think it's a good discussion and a good start. I can't guarantee you today right. what the dollars will be. But he said, Dodd, if you guys get approved for this money, we'll, we'll continue discussions. And, and I'm telling you that I believe Sioux County will participate. Yeah. It, it's a heavily traveled road, mm -hmm. trucks and... Very much so. And, and, and that makes our application uh, a pretty good application because of the amount of trucks that, tra that travel it, because of the economic impact that that road has. But I do want everybody to understand that when, when we walk into the room and negotiate for this grant, there's going to be around $3 million in grant funds available this year. They'll be asking so um, <clears throat> this could be this could be an uphill push, but we'll do our best to see mm -hmm. what we can get. Mm -hmm. We don't know unless if we don't try. The answer is no if you don't ask, right? Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. kind of like the airport project. We say yes now. We are more or less committing ourselves to it, as you said. We are. We are. I mean, they they fully anticipate that if they give us the grant, that we'll come up with our in Oregon. In Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the same project we used on 16th Street right. funds. Very, very true, Brad. Same monies yeah. we got on 16th yeah. Street. And if you remember, 16th Street is not supposed to have been constructed yet. But grant funds became available early because some other projects backed out. So they came to us and said, hey, you can you do your project early? And the council said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we then uh, authorized the monies and did it early. So that's also a possible scenario here, this one then, correct? It's certainly not impossible. Okay. But we could say no. We could say we don't have the ability to do it early. Mm -hmm. We'll take our money in 2024. Sure. Okay. Pete or Tom, do you have any further questions? I don't know if you're hearing all of this discussion or not. I am. I'm just wondering which budget this would fall under, the 2023 budget. This, this will likely span, Tom, Two fiscal years because we'd be looking at um, we'd be looking at bidding a job in the spring of 2024 with completion in the fall of 2024. So this would fall okay. into oh, it start to start in summer. So I would say we could catch the tail end of 23, 24, and the beginning of 24, 25, because okay. the, the 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 monies would come from federal 24, which starts in October of 23. Well, I think it falls in line with this year's commitment towards, uh, uh, you know, community improvement of, the, of our streets. And uh, this is a major, this is a major throwaway in our engine for the city too, so. And I agree with that. The, the other thing, just so everybody understands too, these monies are not just available for any street in town. It has to be a, uh, a major collector of farm to market road. So uh, 2nd Avenue, 16th Street, Western Avenue, Country Club Road, East 9th Street, um, and I believe some portions of Washington Avenue qualify. But beyond that, no other roads in our community can qualify for these monies. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we can use these monies on Oak Street, for instance. Sure. No. Okay. Appreciate the explanation. 
Okay, the other question I have, if we agree for this and down the road we decide that it uh, doesn't fit our needs, can we then back out? We can deny the money. They won't be very excited about it, but we can. But uh, I, I, I would think we would be making getting future grant dollars our way a challenge. That's certainly not a practice I'd want to, uh, to make a habit of. Uh, why 2024? Is that how far out the grants are? Or? Because the, the, the monies that we are going for are monies that become eligible in the federal fiscal year 24, which starts October of 2023. Yeah, that's why. It's, uh, it's th this grant program always works this far in advance. And it helps everybody program and plan. Yeah. Okay. Ready to vote? Roll call, please. Brewster. Aye. Eggers. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Kent. Aye. Barahona. Aye. All right. Moving on. Sam, we're ready for your report if you have anything for us. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, well, I, I my report is self-explanatory. It's fairly short. Uh, a couple of things to add is my conference to Iowa City this week for League of Cities was canceled. Uh, so uh, instead of being in Iowa City, I'm actually downstairs. And the reason I'm downstairs in my office is because I was in, I went through O'Hare twice over the weekend on my way to a funeral in uh, Traverse City, Michigan. And talked to two healthcare professionals who said even though I wasn't exhibiting any sort of symptoms, it was best for me to um, stay uh, away from other people and and uh, simply work in my uh, in my office. So that's what I'm I'm doing. With that being said, I would like to yield um, the remainder of my time to Jared Johnson, who's dialed in. I've asked him to join our meeting today and give us a brief um, update. Uh, from his perspective, and before I do that, I'd like to thank uh, Kevin Miller for his assistance and Todd Yule in getting this uh, virtual meeting set up on such short notice. Thank you, guys. All right, Jared, are you with us? Yes, uh, this is Jared Johnson, Frank County Emergency Management. Can you hear me okay? Yes, uh, just if you speak slowly and clearly, I think we'll be just fine. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your time this afternoon. As you all know, the last several days, last week, have been have been a lot for a lot of people. Uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, preparedness activities, response activities, and planning that's going on, um, there's been a lot of information sharing that's been going on over the past few days. What we've been trying to do is disseminate that information as quickly as possible local partners so that you have the information that you need to help share that with your local community members. Over the last two days, there's been additional information coming out over potential assistance programs that may become available. Um, this morning, I participated in a statewide conference call to find out a little bit more about that. Um, there was also a conference call yesterday to provide some information about the assistance programs that will become available. Uh, so right now, due to the, the nationwide emergency declaration uh, that was declared on March 13, 2020, uh, all of the 99 counties in, in Iowa are eligible for public assistance. So I have been recommending that facilities that could be potential applicants, that they start to document things that they are doing in response to planning for COVID-19 so that way you have that documentation ready available if it does become available um, right now what they've mentioned is that that would be available through public public assistance category b only which is uh, emergency protective measures that you'd be taking to help save lives property and public health and safety um, that would be a 75 percent federal funding what i will my security and emergency management is trying to do is Next week or the week after, they are planning to have some applicant briefing, which we've we've done that before. We we held one 
a little over a year ago, actually, at the Shelton City Hall. And once the information is received, I'll make sure that it gets sent out so individuals can participate on the applicant briefing remotely. Again, like I mentioned before, a lot of community members have been working together to try to identify ways to help out individuals the best that they can on their situation. Things are changing on a daily basis. As we receive information, we're going to keep on trying to get it out to you so uh, you can make the changes that you need to hopefully. I was wondering, does anyone have any current questions you received or anything that we can help with? Jared, Wayne Barahona here. Um, you talked about uh, the, the businesses that could potentially receive relief documenting or make uh, documenting what they need. Could you uh, be a little bit more specific on what types of businesses could be uh, benefiting from this this uh, funding and, and what kind of documentation steps they would need to take? Sure, um, good question. So right now for a small, uh, small business administration, uh, the state is looking for economic injury data uh, from businesses to use that to provide data to the federal government for activation of assistance programs. Uh, so there is a, an economic injury worksheet that individuals may, um, businesses may submit to me, and I can forward that to Homeland Security. Um, some businesses have sent it to them directly as well. So right now what they're trying to do is just gather information over um, how you are being impacted. So some businesses are reporting this is what we usually receive for revenue during this time frame, but this is what we currently are receiving. Uh, COVID-19 is affecting us greatly. And we need support. So they're, they're looking for information like that from as many businesses as possible to, to help support the application that they're going to send to the federal government. And is there a place online that we could uh, get these economic injury worksheets and, and further information? Uh, right now, you can obtain it uh, by uh, using. Uh, uh, so the Kurt has the should have the sheet along with Sam. Should have the sheet as well. So if in it, if a business would like to receive that document, I would recommend reaching out to the city hall to receive a copy. Hey Wayne, do you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, this is Kurt. Um, we do have access to that economic injury sheet here. And just so everybody's aware, we've created a Google Doc that we have pinned to the top of our Facebook page at STDC. And as part of that Google Doc, we have listed all the businesses who have made adjustments to either their hours or the way they're doing business today that's changed, as well as all the resources that we've been getting from both the state, which includes the economic uh, impact uh, surveys that we've been sending out to the businesses. So if anybody wants to receive that directly, um, I would encourage them to either go to our Facebook page or contact us at the office, and we can send out that direct link to that Google Doc. Thank you, Kurt. Are there any other questions for Jared? I guess uh, one more question that you probably is probably above your pay grade, but Jared, what's next? a really good question. I've, I've had several other community members throughout O'Brien County ask the same question today. Um, during the statewide uh, conference call this morning, they spoke of, uh, another individual spoke about that, and kind of the, the response that we received is they're taking it day by day. Um, additional changes may, may happen, but they're uncertain what will take place. Well, we appreciate your vigilance on our behalf, and I guess look forward to hearing more information as it becomes available. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you, Jared, for all your hard work the last couple of days for the county and also for the city. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes. This is Sam. If I, if I could uh, pick up where I left off and... Also wanted to say say thank you to uh, Kurt Strauss and, and Brittany and his office for their assistance and also your assistance. Uh, we're working on getting a, a, a very simple website uh, set up 
and we plan on releasing that in the next couple of days, but it will have a, a basically a landing page. We'll have the, the basic information on this all in one place and um, a way for us to synthesize the, and put together all the information because there's just a lot of information out there about this. So. Okay, thank you. So if you have anything to add, Mayor, if you would do that. Okay, I was going to save it for the end, but we can do it now, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just save it for the closing comments. Um, I would oh, like good. to move around the room here first. If, if you're done with your comments, Sam? I am. Okay. Todd, do you have anything else you would like to share at this point? I mean, not really. Public Works is uh, business as usual. We've made some minor adjustments. We're not currently going into homes unless it's an emergency. Uh, we're trying to make some simplified processes so that if somebody other than a normal plant operator had to go in and start a pump or change something, then we'd be able to do that. We do have remote access, so, so that will help us through. Um, we're just, we've run through some scenarios and are trying to plan for worst case and hoping for best case. So other than that, we're Okay. Todd, with Lyle taking over, that does create a uh, open position. Is that correct? Um, that does create an open position. Um, Sam and I have discussed that position. We have not advertised it as of yet. Uh, we will, but uh, with everything else going on, that may take a back seat here for just a short period of time. Okay. Kurt, do you have anything else you want to share with us? Yeah, real quick, the biggest, the biggest challenge with this COVID-19 is that information seems to be changing by the hour, if not the minute. And so it seems like as we send out correspondence electronically to our membership or through the city, uh, we almost get a different piece of information um, at the same exact time. So uh, we really encourage, and Brittany and Chantel in the office have done an outstanding job of thinking outside of the box. And that Google Doc really is the most current up-to-date information that's accurate that we have. So I think, you know, outside of the website that we're in the process of putting together right now, I really encourage people to publicly to gain access to that link and check it on a regular basis because that really is the most up-to-date information that we have that's accurate. Okay. Thank you. Micah, do you have anything you want to share at this time? No, thank you. All right. Angie, anything that you'd like to no. add? All right. Then I'll ask my councilman to the left. No. Wayne. Uh, all I'd say is uh, <clears throat> it's times like these that will be defining to our, not only our town, but our generation. <laughs> and it's incumbent upon all of us, and not only as citizens of our city, but the citizens of this planet, to help each other out. We know that this virus has affected people uh, livelihood and may uh, have lasting impacts that will go far beyond the length of this virus. So all I can do is encourage everyone to think of their fellow man in this time of need. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of restaurants are shut down. Retail is, is being hit hard by, by this. Just remember this. When it comes time to making a buying decision or when it comes time to just making, uh, going out to spend money or choosing to add your 537th roll of toilet paper to your toilet paper tree, <laughs> we're all in this together and because of that we all will thrive together. All right. Uh, Tom, do you have anything you'd like to add? Not today, thank you. And what about you, Pete? No, I'm good, thank you. All right. I would somewhat echo what Wayne has said. Yesterday we had a meeting with several leaders of the various organizations that are part of this community and discussed our response, what efforts we are currently doing, each organization is involved with, uh, how can we do that better, perhaps by cooperating together, working, making sure that we're not duplicating efforts. Uh, and as 
many of you know, I mean, I don't know who just said, I think Kurt said that it's changing, the information is changing in our uh, packets. Last Thursday, Sam had written uh, and it included a comment from the IPH, Iowa.gov, there is currently no known community spread. Uh, and this is a very fluid situation. We urge the public to closely monitor mes messaging from the Iowa Department of Public Health for updated guidance. At that point, five days ago, six days ago, schools were still open. We weren't really even thinking about closing as a city hall, but those things are happening. And this, I think as a community, we could be all over the board in terms of a reaction. We can think this is making a mountain out of a molehill. We can be panicking. I guess I would just urge everyone to take it seriously, but don't panic. There are a lot of things that are happening. There's assistance available. We will get through this. And I think in the end, we will be better as a result of it. If you don't know and you need information and you can't, you don't have access to electronic information, you can call City Hall, you can call the SEDC office, you can talk to a neighbor, call a neighbor. Uh, but take it seriously, but don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let loose sleep over it at this point. Uh, we're going to get through it. So maintain a certain degree of prudence in terms of how you're conducting your affairs, the groceries and whatnot. Buy what you need, but don't make sure that there's enough to go around as well. And where that balance is, is going to be a difficult thing to find. But again, just exercise prudence. Be patient with one another. Everyone is doing the best we can. I hope at one point down the road we can say this was a lot like the Y2K thing. Some people don't, weren't even born back then. But there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear of what's going to happen in the and we got through it, and it wasn't that bad. And I hope that that is the case here, too. But at the same time, because of our preparation, we don't want to be down the road saying we, didn't, we should have done more. We could have done this. So, and that is why all these precautions are being taken. So continue to lend, give us your patience. And be, don't be afraid to ask questions. Call in, email. There's lots of ways to communicate. But we will get through this. Uh, one more thing I do have, just it, while, you're, while, while you're at home, uh, the census uh, envelopes have come in the mail, I think. It's important that everyone fill that out so we get an accurate count in terms of what this, how many people we have in this community. A lot of our funding is based on those census figures, so please take that as seriously as well. Get those census figures filled out and, and turned in. And if the census taker shows up at your door, please answer and answer their questions, maintaining that six-foot social distance, perhaps. So that's all I have at this point. I take a motion to adjourn. I was going to add to that, Greg. They talked about yesterday the Iowa 211 number. They could also call and the, oh, and the Iowa 211 website for information pertaining to Iowa. Yep. So you were listening to that. I thought I'd just mention that. Very good. Thank you. Take a motion to adjourn. Support. Roll call. Eggers. Aye. Hamill? Aye. Barahona? Aye. Hand? Aye. Brewster? Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>